Hi guys, my name is Felix Raphael and today I want to show you how I play live and especially we're gonna have a closer look to how I arrange and structure my live set to be able to perform and jam and of course sing as much as possible. So let's start with the main part of this tutorial. I wanna uh, show you and guide you step by step through the process of um, developing the live set. I work in the session view. At first, we delete all stop keys because we can save some of uh, the CPU by deleting them. We go to the stems that we exported, the kick drum, and we're gonna drag and drop it. We're gonna go inside the stem and warp it. It's very important that you warp it on the actual BPM of the track. I like to use the repitch mode as the warping mode. It has the best sound quality. This is gonna be one song, columns three, four and five, and column one, two and three is gonna be the other song. Of course we need to loop it, then we duplicate it. The first row I call introduction row. It starts and it runs into a loop, so I am able to be as creative as I want with live devices. And I'm not in, in a rush, so I can take as much time as I want. Let's go to the drums, we drag and drop it. We do the same, we warp it, 122 BPM, warping mode, repitch. And now we try to find a nice loop at the beginning. We loop it, solo it. The end and the beginning are the best um, spots to play live. If you have too much going on, it can be overloading. Again, we duplicate it to the second row. We take the instrument stem and drag and drop it. Same procedure, we warp it, and then we have a look, or better said, a listen. What sounds nice and also is good loopable. Okay, that's fine. It's not perfect, but it's, it's okay if you do other stuff. There's not, not like the main focus on that. We already have our introduction row of that track duplicated to the second one, so you don't have to warp it again and don't have to search the warping mode. What I like to do now is that I cut the sample here in the introduction row. So we just have that particular sample. So we do that with all these three. And now we already have our introduction row, which is basically the first loop. Let's have a listen. Now, I'm good to jam on it. So I bring in some one shots from the machine. I can play some piano chords on uh, the MPK and not feel in, in a rush because it just it just keeps going, you know? So if I'm done with the live things, I can say, okay, I wanna go outside the loop and come to the main section, which is the second row. Let's start here. Runs into the loop and ends at the timeline nine. So what we do now is that we start at timeline nine in the second row. From here, if we trigger the second row, we go all the way till we finish the track at the end. What we need to do is to find a good loop at the end, of course. Let's have a listen. Also, it doesn't need to be perfect because a lot of other stuff is going on. Then we go into the drum section and we do the same thing again. We start at the timeline nine up here. We search for a nice loop at the end, which I can already see that we just go all the way through the end. And we have kind of the same elements going. So that combination would be at the end. All right. Last but not least, we go to the kick, which is very simple because the kick is very stable and we don't have any issues to find a good loop at the end. Again, we go from timeline nine till the end. 
What is important in the kick section is that you turn off the fade so it doesn't cut off the transient, the beginning. So we turn off that one and also, okay, that's already turned off. We're good to go. So we have our loop, our introduction row. And you can mix it nicely, just as you want it. Okay, for me now the kick sounds a bit too loud now, so I don't go all the way up. I can go from the introduction row to the main row. Push it all at the same time. And then we go into the track. One more thing, I have uh, two bars pre-roll. So it's two bars from pushing or triggering uh, the clips till they start to play. And also it's quantized. So we have our basic foundation already. Let's go to groove section one, which is for spicing up our instrumental. Maybe you remember that we reduced our production file with some elements, some one shots and some loops. And now we are able to have more control over the whole thing by mixing them into the track if we want it or bringing them out if we want more, more softness. So for that I go into the sample pack I made for uh, Production Music Live called Organic House. If you have a look into the description you can have a listen. So I go to drum and percussion loops. I like the stereo ones. Well, we go for that one. And I drag and drop it to groove one. Now I have to warp it on 120 BPM because I recorded it on that tempo. Also we go on the repitch and now we have some spice. So we have the kick which is very loud. <laughs> we have this, the drums with the melody and now we can bring in the groove. Of course we need to loop it again. That's basically it for groove one. For groove two, we kind of do the same. I like to go on um, shaker loops there. Okay, that's nice. Bring it in. Same procedure. We go on repitch, we go on loop. And now, let's try it. And bring in group one. So now we have already have more things going on. Of course now they're pretty loud, so I can go here and say, let's say minus 10. But it's up to you, I mean you can mix it here as you like, just go for your ears, use your ears. Okay, so this is uh, track 2 that I prepared before, and now you see that you have track one from column one to three and track two from column four to six. And now you're able to mix them into each other very nicely. So we have track one playing and we can go and trigger the intro row of track two. And we can, and we can switch to the kick of the second track. And then we can bring in the instruments of the second track. Yeah, so we're able to have pretty nice and gentle 
transitions. And then we can bring in groove one, which is a tom groove in that case. Bring in a shaker loop. So you see, you can build it up and develop it very nicely um, and staying inside this eight column surface of the APC. So you don't have to flip or to change to uh, another page. So you see now I'm in the loop of the track, track two. And if I'm feeling like it, I can one, two, switch to row two. So now, but still there's some like percussions from the first track going on. And if I like it, I just can leave them on as long as I want. Okay, so now I will have a little performance for you and try to involve all the stuff I was talking about. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial and took something out of this.
Um, thank you very much for watching my tutorial on how I play live. And I really hope that you can get something out of this and maybe develop your own live set or improve your live set. Feel free to check out the description below. There's a lot of free uh, stuff for you. Also check out Production Music Live's tutorials and maybe sample packs. They also have very nice stuff that help me in my production and in my live set. Stay safe, bye bye.